Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of internal controls over financial reporting. So here we go. What exactly are internal controls over financial reporting, or what you see me abbreviate here as ICFR? Um, these are essentially safeguards, all right, protections, and, and their goal is uh, simply to protect the assets of the company. That's goal number one. So literally, protect your cash protect your inventory, protect your building, protect your equipment, protect your investments, right? Protect the assets of the company. Also, to maintain accuracy and reliability of financial reporting. So make sure that no irregularities can show up in your financial statements, either intentionally or unintentionally. And then lastly, ensure compliance with laws and regulations to the extent that your company operates in an industry or in some product over which there is regulation and compliance, internal controls are there to make sure you don't miss anything and you don't become subject to fines or, or legal actions, okay? So they're basically safeguards that are in place to accomplish each of those three things. Now, there are five primary concepts behind an internal control over financial reporting system, and I have them listed here. I'll go through them one at a time and kind of explain each piece. First up, you have the control environment. The control environment is also known as the tone at the top. And essentially, this is, um, in general, what is the, uh, the feeling in the company around safeguards? Are they viewed as vital and important to the company? Or are they viewed as a nuance, or, uh, sorry, a nuisance <laughs> Um, that management just wishes they could just do away with, right? Do they place importance on protecting the assets? Or are they willy-nilly and say, oh, you know, whatever, we, we don't care. We, we, yeah, protect it if you can, but it's not a big deal. Like, what is that tone? That's your control environment. And that's kind of the basis of internal controls all around, your whole system. Like, if, if, if management treats controls like they're important, then typically the company will treat them like they're important. If management does not, then that's when problems start to arise. All right, next up, risk assessment. The risk assessment is something that you do periodically, and basically this is how you identify the risks to the company. Identify how will our cash get stolen? How will our inventory get stolen or damaged? How will our buildings get damaged? How will our investments lose value, right? These are, this is how you identify the risks to the company. You assess it periodically to say, what are the dangers we face? Where could we be sued? Where could we lose value? And then you start coming up with a plan to fix that. And the fixes is what's known as the control activities. So these mitigate the risks to the company. So, real simple thing. Think of cash, right? How will our cash get stolen? Well, somebody could come into the business and literally take it and walk away. All right, how do we stop that? Let's put the cash in a safe. Boom, control activity. Let's put video cameras around the safe. Boom, control activity. Let's make sure only certain people have the combination for the safe. Boom, control activity, right? That's what control activities are. They're the things you do to stop the risks that you identified through the risk assessment. All right, next up, information and communication. That's exactly what it sounds like, right? Open informativeness throughout the company, communication from top to bottom. And so there's no reason for me to I define what information and communication is. Instead, what I will say is without this, without this, the tone cannot be established, right? Because if you don't have management communicating the tone, then the tone can't be established to begin with. Risks may not be identified, right? Think about that, right? If, if you've got risks to the company, well, who knows what the risks are? Well, typically it's going to be the employees. And if there's not adequate communication to talk to those employees and discuss what those risks are, you may not identify them. And of course, a natural follow through, if you don't identify them, control activities may not be established 
or even if established, or carried out properly, right? So maybe you identify the risk, maybe you establish the control activity, but because of lack of proper communication, whoever's supposed to be doing that activity doesn't do it right. So information communication, pretty self-explanatory, but it's more so the concern of without it, everything else falls apart. And then of course, the last one, we have monitoring. This is just ongoing assessment of whether control activities are still relevant and complete. So remember, over time, businesses do change. Maybe you start off in one product, maybe expand to two products, maybe expand to 10 products, maybe you start in one, one location, and you expand to two locations, you expand to 10 locations, right? Businesses morph over time. So even if you have set the proper tone and you've identified all the risks early on and you've uh, uh, established effective controls to mitigate all those risks, there is a chance that whatever you did at day zero at a company that may not be adequate at day, say, 700 of the company, right? Because companies change over time. And so monitoring is what helps us deal with those ongoing changes of, hey, are we still managing these risks appropriately? That's what internal controls um, are, are, are there to do. And, and those are the five concepts behind having a good internal control system. All right, that's it for your overview of our internal controls over financial reporting. Hope you found this helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.